Welcome to episode three of the Trav's Outfitter podcast. We are during, this is Independence Week this week. The 4th of July is coming up and um, we've got a couple special guests with us as well today. So uh, seated to my left is uh, Trav's Outfitter owner, Travis Uthi. And we're joined today by Watertown's uh, fire and police chief. They're kind enough, kind enough to join us today. Uh, Assistant Chief Ryan Remmers with the Watertown Police Department and Assistant Chief Scott Youngblood with the fire department. So thanks for joining us today, guys. Thanks for having us. So we're super excited to have you on again uh, for episode three. Um, And we are talking about uh, kind of Independence Day, you know, the people who keep us safe and free. Um, But let's, before we dig into that, kind of let's talk about your history here, um, how you guys got into the police field and the fire department. Um, and kind of walk us through your journey a little bit. I'll go first. Yeah, All right. We, we were Have just talking it, Ryan. in here that, uh, oddly enough, Scott and I both started in uh, July of 99 with our respective departments in the same month. And here we are almost 25 years later, and we're here. But I'm one of those weird kids that um, is doing my dream job, the job that I said I was going to do when I was in third grade. Um, um, as far as I know, all my third grade classmates at Roosevelt Elementary School None of them ever became acrobats or astronauts, but <laughs> I said I wanted to be a cop, and here I am, you know, like 40 some years later, and I'm, you know, I'm a cop. So I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm also very grateful to do my dream job in my dream community, the community that I grew up in, and uh, that I take a lot of pride in. Um, so it's it's been a it's been a journey over those last uh, you know 25 years of working here, but um, I wouldn't wouldn't do it any other way. It's just been the greatest job ever. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure in third grade I wanted to be a firefighter too, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't pursue that, and I was quite a bit older than when I finally figured out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Uh, I had friends when I was growing up that were in the volunteer fire department uh, where I grew up, and then uh, we moved here, and as I got older, I was actually in a volleyball league, and there was a firefighter team, and I got to know those guys, and you know, I didn't think about that being a career, and the more I talked to them and how they were excited about their job, and my history and background a little bit, I thought, you know, I think I could really, that sounds like fun. I think I'd really like to run into a burning building. I think that'd be great <laughs> and, and get to serve the community and, and fight fire. And then also with that, we run the ambulance service too. So I get to help people out in the, you know, with their medical concerns with that. So I, uh, I wanted to be a firefighter when I was a kid, I'm sure, because all, all boys want to be a firefighter, right? But a really realization didn't come for me until I was an adult. So. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's kind of a, 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 both of those professions are centered around community service and servant leadership. How, wh- why were you drawn to that line of work in particular? I think for me, it's just, a, it's always been, initially I think it was because it looked like a really exciting and fun job. Um, and then you realize early on that it's like, not like the TV shows that, you're not running into burning buildings every day, and I'm not chasing down bad guys, you know, in a police car every day. Um, you learn that that's not it, and I think as as I matured with my career and in my own life, um, that I realized that it's a bigger picture than what it was originally, twenty uh, some years ago. Um, I think back then I probably didn't see the forest through the trees. Now I see the bigger picture, and uh, it makes it just all that much more enjoyable for me. So I, I wish I could say that I wanted to be a police officer from the start because I wanted to help people. And, and there's to some extent that's true, but I think initially it was the fun factor. And now I get a sense of fun in a different way. Mm-hmm. My, my sense of fun is actually helping put on events and to helping make sure that our whole community is a safe place. Yeah, I, you know, for me as too, it's, uh, you know, we have to go through a psychiatric evaluation to get hired. And so you got, it's kind of, Funny, but well, when you get all done, he goes, "Well, according to your value, you look. I think you'll make a pretty good firefighter because you seem to thrive off of adrenaline and action, and this seems to be the right uh, fit for you." So, yeah, young in my career, I wanted to gung ho, get in there, do it all, and I still, I still do. But as you uh, promote in the fire service and you put on what they call a white shirt, then the younger guys aren't letting you on the fire hose anymore to go <laughs> on there. So, you as you develop in your career and and you get to uh, live in the satisfaction of seeing the, the ones underneath you, the younger firefighters that are moving up and 
all the good they're going out there and listen to them to come back and talk about the calls they've been on so you get your joys through their their actions and stuff and like i said our my job now is to make sure that they have the tools and the equipment and, and training to make sure that they can go out and serve the public and so it's just a kind of different calling but yeah going out and help people just a natural instinct i think of any midwesterner is to help people and then we just get to step up and do this a little bit more that's really awesome. You know, my wife watches all these shows, though. You're talking about these TV shows. <laughs> I want to be on them shows. I want to be that kind of fireman, that kind of police officer, you know. He's just, the dude's completely ripped. And every lady that's on the, on the uh, whatever, team, whatever it is, yeah. in the department, they want something to do with you. I mean, I'm telling you, you guys say it's not that way. But, I mean, I see that stuff. My wife watches these TV shows, and I'm like, Man, my life is boring compared to that. See, I've, we've been getting our ballistic vests out here for years, and I've always said that you could make a million dollars if all you got to do is those vests, just like have them create some abs in those things or whatever, and then sell us shirts that are tighter too. And then it would like look those like old ripped. school corsets. Yes. You know, yeah. you just Put it pull on. it really tight on the side, yep. have your buddy pull it really tight on the yep. side, and then have him build some pecs in yeah, there. Yeah, nobody's developed one of those yet, like yep. a Batman suit, <laughs> basically, but it'd be a Kevlar vest. Yeah. You know, in, the, in that culture, like when we started, I don't, physical fitness was not high on, yeah. our, on our list. Now, I mean, you talk about rip, those young firefighters and, and police officers we got, they're in the gym. They're out yep. there working. It. it started out, we had to kind of push them, and now it's they're they're there they're getting it done so that their physiques and the and the what is required of them and what's needed of them and their mindset towards that i mean they're they're on the game it's yeah where it wasn't necessarily it wasn't kind of an old old school game and yeah these they're they're ripped or whatever you know uh not everybody can be a calendar model and, <laughs> and i've asked about being on a calendar i said yeah i'll do november and december <laughs> <laughs> Uh, talking uh, right before the show started, we were talking a little bit about the fire school that came to Watertown. That just wrapped up. Can you talk a little bit about that? What is the fire school? Who who sponsors that, and why they're coming to Watertown? So it's a state fire school. Uh, it's put on by the South Dakota Firefighter Association. Uh, historically, it would, the uh, cities would have to bid for it and have it come into their community, and it, it would bounce around. Well, then it got, as everything does, everything gets busier. So they started looking for host cities, and Watertown was selected uh, last year to become a host city. It was a partnership with Lake Area Tech, with the college. They were looking for a, a college level uh, learning, adult learning environment. Uh, they've been in other communities and they were using elementary schools. So if you ever did conferences with your kids and went and sat in front of Mrs. Jones and talked about your kid, you were sitting in an elementary seat. Well, that doesn't work so well with adults for hours on time so they come to Watertown it's been a great partnership the firefighter association is overly pleased with the city of Watertown that everything that the community has put forward towards it and the Lake Area Tech College and what they can provide for that fire school uh, last year was a record number for attendance and we beat the, this year by six but we're still moving up and still granted yeah. so to maintain record levels and I just confirmed here too that in 2025 it will be here for sure, and 2026. And so as long as as long as Watertown's willing to have them, they're wanting to come, and it's it's a great event. But it's firefighters from all across the state come, and uh, we even had firefighters from Minnesota come and attend it. And then it's two full days of of education. Some some are just classroom stuff, and some is physical demanding work out there. You're learning mm -hmm. different techniques and stuff. Like what a testament to our community i you know i was downtown i don't go to all the thursday night lives but i was downtown for that thursday night live laura and i came down there and i don't know whether you guys got a count or not but there had to have been 1500 2000 people there i mean it was a perfect night shades of air was playing the local kids and uh, those Omdal kids they grew up with my son so i you know i, I kind of got a heart for those guys but i mean the uh the sort of whatever you call that, the barrel and hose thing or whatever. Yeah, the water fights. Water so fights. Yeah. yeah, the the water fights. I mean, there were people on both sides of the street watching that, and um, it was a it was a really really almost picturesque, you know, Norman Rockwell kind of uh, 
gathering of people, right? It, it was just uh, the line to get to County Fair's concession stand was at least 100 yards long, you know? And, um, and those, are the things that, those are the things that make my heart happy, you know? It's not only, not only um, through the South Dakota firefighters are they equipping and teaching men and women to do their job at a better level, but they're also being able to have a little fun doing it. And uh, we get a chance to showcase just a little bit of, of just how awesome Watertown is. Yeah, some good good uh, tr traditional Americana going on. Yes, right yeah. That's what struck out uh, to me that night too. I had one of my, I got a kid that's a freshman down at SDSU and he and I just kind of said, let's go down to Thursday Night Live. I think they're doing the fireman thing that night. And that same thing, a couple thousand people. What a great way to promote Watertown to all of those you know, I don't know what you have, 500 and some firefighters? 561, I think, is wow. 531. That's what it was. Wow. Yeah, and I mean, I guarantee you, every one of those people that were there that night that come from all across the state got a good impression of Watertown with the result of Thursday Night Live. There were, I mean, that thing has grown huge. I mean, there's vendors selling hats and like jewelry and, you know, some of our local people doing some of that. Um, what a great thing for Watertown yes. to become. Agreed. I want to ask both of you, because uh, I think every business now is finding this to be a struggle, is finding people and finding the, the right people to fill the seats that need to be filled. Are you guys both finding it an issue to find police off people who want to be police officers and people who want to be firefighters? Or is there a line of people waiting and you got to wade through them all? Well, I can speak for the fire service because, you know, uh, there again with the Lake Area Tech College here and the Med Fire program they have, we are the anomaly in the nation. Other communities in the state are having a hard time finding fire, and we have a list of people that we could hire every year if we had the positions. Wow. We are we are so lucky in Aberdeen, Sioux Falls, those bigger cities, Rapid City. They they wish they had what we have, and we know it. Yeah, and we help build that. We work exclusively with that program. Most of the instructors, not all the instructors, are from us, so. Uh, we get those students in coming and doing their ride time because they're, they're coming to become paramedics. They have to do so many hours of ride time. So they live in Watertown. We have a service that can provide that ride time with them. We build those relationships and it's been good for them students because there's sometimes people don't interview as good as Travis mm -hmm. does. I mean, Travis is just a natural, you know, <laughs> and some people don't talk, you know, can't vocalize what they want, but they come into the department, they uh, get reputation built for themselves they show their work and it's helped some of the students and not only that it's also helped some students that never thought of Watertown for to be in a career and they yeah. get here they go to school they learn the community they come into the department they say you know I, I think I could really be happy in Watertown so as far as us yeah we're we're real lucky to have that, that college program uh, with the Medfire Rescue there and quality candidates I probably 90 percent of our hires have come out of the that's awesome. Yeah, we're very much the same with, uh, I think it's been since about 2013 or so that the Lake Area Tech Law Enforcement Program, we've got 41 police officers in town when we're fully staffed. At any given time, we've got about 10 or 11 of those are graduates of that two-year Lake Area Tech Program. So that's been a huge win for us and for our police department and our community. Um, and speaking of like that 2013 time period though, that's uh, Ferguson, Missouri, the, you know, like, that national narrative started to swing against law enforcement, like at a national level in about that time period. And then of course you move into 2020, the George Floyd, um, you know, you've got all those national media things and and um, we're a little bit insulated here in Watertown because um, our, our community, the public that make up our community, I believe still trust the local law enforcement at a higher level than what they do nationally. and. Uh, so I always say this too, like when I go to County Fair across the street uh, from the police department for lunch almost every day and I walk in there, I'm a lot more likely to have somebody stop me and say, hey, thank you for your service than I'm ever likely to run across like somebody that says anything uh, negative about our, our my chosen career or our department. Um, that's what's great about Watertown is that people still appreciate us. And that doesn't come for free. That is that, that public trust is something that our department has worked at, um, you know, for years and years and years to make sure that we 
build initially and then maintain that public trust because that's one bad call away from swinging the other direction yeah that's isn't that so true in life you know my dad i was very young and and my dad was a power lineman. I don't know if you guys know that. I've shared it with a lot of people. But my dad was a hardworking guy. And I, I was really, really young. I was brushing my teeth one time. I was 8, 10 years old. And my dad stood behind me in the mirror. And I'll never forget it. And he looked at me and he says, you take a look in the mirror. And he said, if you don't like what you see in that mirror, you better get changing it. And then he went on to say, the only thing that you leave this world with is your name. And he said, your name is Travis Youthy." And if you don't live your life in a, in a way that honors that name, you won't leave with a good name. And, and I, that's true. It's true of us personally. It's true of Trav's Outfitter. It's true of the Watertown Police Department, Watertown Fire Rescue. Um, in today's world, finding the truth is hard. It shouldn't be, but finding the truth is hard. And so... Um, you know, I just I want to commend you guys and your departments for all that you guys do uh, to uphold that standard, to remind people that the police officers are broken, sinful people just like retailers are. But at the end of the day, they mean well. At the end of the day, they get up in the morning and they have the intention of doing the very best. And I, I believe that. And, and I've seen nothing that would debate that from either one of your guys' uh, departments. And, and that's... Uh, that's a blessing. It really is a blessing to live in a community such as Watertown. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Travis kind of touched on it there. But what are what are some of the traits that you look for when you're in the hiring process? When you're looking at candidates, what do you look for in a person to wear that badge and represent Watertown and your department well? Here, well, I'll, I'll go first on this one. I'd, we. You know, it's weird to go back and forth. Sometimes we think that ideal perfect police officer candidate is somebody that's from Watertown or has ties to this community because they're probably more likely to stick around for a full career if they're invested in the community. But then at the same time, we've also hired people from elsewhere that 15 years later, they're still here and they've become a new member of our community. So that's that's a toss up there, I guess. But ideally somebody that uh, we can teach you how to be a police officer that's that's easy um, this job is not that difficult that way what we need is good honest people that are doing the work for the right reasons it's the kind of people that are gonna stop and help somebody out in a situation when when nobody's watching but they're doing the right thing mm -hmm. even when they're not going to get any recognition for it mm -hmm. um, and that's a little harder to find than somebody that um, can learn to be a police because we can teach you how to be a police officer but you have to have a, a good heart in yeah. order to do this um, and to do it out for a long time for the right reasons yeah i'm sure you can't teach a person to be a person yeah that's right so you have, you're right that has to come from the core so that's what we look forward to is that honesty we go back to our our core values I know the police department's got core values too but we look for somebody that's going to look for service excellence honesty integrity professionalism as some basis of tradition because we're only as good as where we came from. Yes. We're not, we talk about we're not the same departments we were because we built, we get better. And we look for somebody that fits into what we call our brotherhood. We're a family in our, you know, both of our services, you know, the fire department, uh, especially those individuals, they work shift work. So they're, they're working together 24 hours. You know, if you're with somebody for 24 hours, you learn things about them you don't want to, and you learn some great things about them. But they build that family and off work, they're, they're still socialized stuff like that. So you're, you're looking for that personality and that person. They said, we, I can teach you to be, I, well, I, we can teach you to be a firefighter, mm -hmm. paramedic, and you get, you get your schooling and stuff like that. But I can't teach you to be a person. That's, that's got to come from you. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's crazy how easy that is to spot or not that you know, traits. Yeah, you know, we, we started running on EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System at Trav's Outfitter. we got to be over two years in now. And one of the first things that our, that our integrator, uh, implementer, I get it always wrong, but the implementer said is that we had to create, you know, we already had sort of core values, but we re really needed to nail them down. And, um, and EOS has helped us with a lot of things as Trav's Outfitter has grown. Um, but the best thing that it's helped us with is hiring. Um, and I'm sure you guys would, uh, you know, once you know what those things are, 
you can talk to somebody and within five minutes it's a thumbs up or thumbs down there's rarely a, a sideways thumb and it and, and the people that are thumbs down doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just means that they're not the right person for the right seat. That's what we call it in EOS, right? And so once you get to that point, I don't know how to explain it, but there's just something satisfying about that, right? Where you're not hiring somebody going, God, I just hope this works out, you know? I mean, there was a time 20 years ago or 18, 19 years ago, um, I was doing the hiring. I was doing everything. And, I, man, if they could fog a mirror... I'd give them a shot, you know. <laughs> well, it, it just it doesn't work that way anymore, and um, and frankly, it's it's made Trav's Outfitter a more peaceful place. And I'm sure you guys could attest to that in your departments too, right? If you if you get the wrong person, it, it, it's not just the wrong person, but it upsets the whole apple cart. Yeah, it kind of goes back to it only takes one bad apple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's hard. That's that hiring process that way. I mean, right now is a, a case in point. We have we have an opening that we've interviewed a bunch of people for, and we just haven't found that person. We've interviewed people that were great people. It's just that they're not a perfect fit for what we're looking for at the moment, so we're going short-staffed for a longer period of time until we find that right person. I think that's important to do it that way as opposed to, let's say, settling on somebody mm -hmm. that is not that perfect candidate. I think taking the higher road, the harder decision is to leave that position unfilled for a little bit until we come across the right person. Yeah, I would agree. We do the same thing here. Yeah. Talking a little bit outside of work, um, your lines of, of uh, you know, what you do in your day to day can be very challenging and can challenge you um, in, in more ways than one. So what I'm interested in hearing both of you talk about is, is what do you do outside of work to kind of decompress and, and maybe not forget about the day, but unwind and, and what do you do to, to, you know, get some you time? Yeah, for me, it's different now than what it was 10 or 15 years ago because I had young kids 10 or 15 years. So my away from work time was tied up shuttling them around to their various activities. But now they're all grown up a little bit more and they don't want to hang out with me anyway because I'm old. Um, but uh, it's important, and we tell all of our new people this too, is find a hobby, uh, find some hobbies, do something outside of police work because you're going to burn out. I don't I don't go home and watch those shows that your wife mm -hmm. watches because that's... I don't really watch them either. I just well, I see them when I walk through the living yeah. room because it's really not my gig. But yeah, I just you know like I, I find various little hobbies. I, a couple of years ago, I picked up playing the electric guitar, so I'm trying to teach myself how to play electric guitar. You know, um, I like lawn care. It's kind of fun in the summertime to mm -hmm. make my yard look nice and stuff. Just a peaceful hobby like that. Over the years, I picked up golf, and that came and went, and just kind of different hobbies like that to try to um, make my mind occupied. To, to give me something to do that was productive. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Same way we like to travel. So I, my free time, we we try to go out and travel as much as we can. Uh, can proudly say that I've had my kids in all lower forty-eight states. Uh, that's awesome. My frame. That's an so awesome we, accomplishment. So if, if I'm not traveling, I'm trying to plan my next trip traveling. That's uh, I got some stuff coming up this winter, and like my friend said that. Uh, we well, hate to wish the summer away, but yeah, but I got some fun stuff coming up. This is what I want to go do, and, but you hate to do it. So, and then, you know, I'm a homeowner, so if you're a homeowner, you know you have things that helps keep your mind off of work, and, yeah. and I do enjoy doing projects. I've, I've bought a house as a fixer-upper and I made it to something, and I got a small acreage, so it just getting out, you know, it's harder in the winter. Nobody wants to go out in the winter and push snow, but it's nice to get out in the summer and, yeah. you know, go tend to the trees, garden, maybe mow the lawn if it doesn't need it, but I can mm -hmm. put my headphones on, and that's just an hour that I don't have to do anything and don't have to think. And yeah. That's where I, I get to my happy place now, is just be able to just to sit and be in the moment and, and then start thinking about what i got to do tomorrow. Yeah. But, <laughs> I would – it was probably around – a little, little over 20 or a little less than 20 years ago when we first got into law enforcement uniforms and boots and, and uh, you know, we, we got into it. Uh, we were, I kind of felt like we had hit the wall with our boot truck business. We were going to manufacturers and, and I was like, well, God, police officers and firefighters and highway patrol, sheriff's office, they all got to have black boots. So I went and bought this little short bus, took all the seats out of it, turned it into this uh boot bus you know and 
And I quickly learned that uh, footwear programs are not very organized with police departments and fire departments. So that was a, uh, it's, it's a case study of Travis Uthi not doing all the market research. I just, you know, headlong into something, right? Yeah, but then I met a guy uh, from Arvada, Colorado, and he said, you really need to get in the vest business. And I was like, ah, I don't know, you know. But the vest business for us, is it's not a super profitable part of our business. Vests are expensive, as you all know, but there's not a lot of profit in it for us. But vests, are, I found, are kind of like footwear. Um, if, we sell a, if we sell a man or a woman a pair of shoes and they're a half size or a full size too short, it's miserable the whole time they wear that pair of shoes. If we sell a law enforcement officer a ballistic vest that's too long, and when you sit down, your duty belt shoves it up into your neck, that's a long five years, right? Yeah. And, um, and then I learned, I learned through that whole process that whether it's, whether it's police or fire, and, it, and this is not being disrespectful, I'm just being real, and you guys maybe correct me, but I've learned over the years that you guys and your departments oftentimes work with the bottom three to 5% of our society. And over a 25 or 30 year career, that's got to get hard. It just does. I'm just, I'm just being real about it. Um, I've, been in, uh, I've been in my game for 39 years. The 15th of June, it was 39 years I've been in retail. I started at 15 years old. And I remember when I was in my 20s, um, I had peers in the business that were older than me. They were a lot further down the road than me. And they didn't wait on customers. And I was like, this just no, doesn't make any sense, right? Like, that, that, that's, the, that's the foundation of my business is waiting on customers. And I have to tell you guys, I don't know when it happened, but in the last five years, regretfully, I, I still love my customers. You guys still love the people that you serve. But it gets harder, Maybe you guys don't feel that, but for me, it gets harder. It's, it's like, man, I've already been down this road five times with this person, right? I've, already, I've explained to them five times their shoes are too small, and they come back after every pair is wore out, and they complain to me their feet hurt, right? And, and so I guess where I'm going with this is that um, it's a great, you're great careers, and you guys have both done a great job at your career. But if you're honest about it, there is a point after so many years in your career that you start to reach. I, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but uh, but if you do reach that, it's real, right? And it's it's in no disrespect or in no. It's not that you're not caring for your fellow man. It's just real. So I think that's probably most visible to our our like your spouse and our spouses and our kids that that uh, they see that you, you get a little bit, um, I don't know what the best way to say that is without sounding bad or whatever, but um, you, you see enough bad things going on in, in the world or in our community or whatever after having done our jobs for that, that long and you start to get uh, kind of a bad impression of society mm -hmm. a little bit. And then you gotta, you gotta check that and, and every once in a while just go, okay. And that's where in, in our situation it's great to go just do something at the high school or one of the elementary schools, you know, like to, you got to balance that, that bad stuff that you're seeing with the good fun stuff that we're seeing too, um, to make sure that we, we stay positive that way. Cause yeah. it can be a challenge sometimes when you're, when you're doing, especially for the, the young patrol officer people that, I mean, literally every call they're going on on the night shift is trying to fix somebody's problems. There's yes. always something going on. It's a nice little break once in a while when we bring them to the day shift and say, hey, can you go read this book about uh, whatever to the second grade class? Mm -hmm. And it's, it fills their cup back up a little yes. bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you know, we're, we're lucky we get to serve the community. You know, we're in customer service. We're a customer service. Yes. It's not necessarily the same way you are, but we are. We, we have a customer base. We had to, to service the whole community. And, you know, firefighters got it probably better than police officers because everybody's happy to see a firefighter show up, right? Uh, uh, police officers not so much because you know they're just dealing with maintaining peace yes if you will so uh but we generally are we deal with people in their worst worst time frame yes. too so yep. we don't necessarily deal with the worst of the public when we're dealing with some of the worst of their times situations, so, situations. yeah yeah so when we get those opportunities like you said to go in the elementary schools or schools or do some other fun things uh 
uh, fly the flag on Veterans Day and, and be in the parade and, and all those other little fun community service that you know takes time, but it's that's the fun side of the job. That yeah. You Kids come in and want to see the fire trucks, and you get to put them in the fire truck. You shut the door and take a picture, and you have the big old smile on their face. Yes. So you, you take the good and the bad, and, you, and that's how you wash out some of that bad we've seen. You know, we all see bad, and people, how do you do it? I said, well, you, know, you do what you got to do. I don't. I can't be a foot doctor. I'm not going to look at somebody's feet all day. How do you do that? You know? <laughs> but uh, I can. I, I have the ability, and, and they have the ability to. We do what we have to deal with, and then we take care of ourselves and, uh, when it's all said and done. Yeah. And it's Independence Week. So what does that mean for you guys? Do you guys get to go do parades, or are you in the parade, or how do, how do you celebrate Independence Week? It's, historically, it's been a pretty busy week for both your department and our department, too. You know, you've got hundreds of complaints of fireworks being discharged in town. Some of those complaints are going to result in some injuries or some fires. I mean, it's just inevitable. This year's about as good as you can have. It's been raining enough to where the fire danger isn't quite as bad as what it has been in some years. But I almost guarantee you somebody's going to shoot a Roman candle at somebody else in the wrong way or whatever, and they're going to end up, his people are going to end up, you know, having to help them out medically or whatever, too. And uh, it can be a pretty busy time period. Of course, Watertown, we've got a lot of great events going on from that the parade where there's probably going to be four or five thousand people lining the streets of camp avenue there and then probably that same number if not more out there at the fireworks display out at anza soccer complex that night um, so anytime you have that many people in a group um, it's a challenge just to get them into and out of there safely um, and in a timely enough manner to where people aren't disgruntled about having to take a half an hour to get away from the parking lot to their house yeah Oh yeah, we all want to have fun on Fourth of July. I mean, we're, at some point we're all a kid, and we will get to write that firecracker or, <laughs> or, the, or the bottle rocket or even the sparkler and put it on. But uh, you know, we just gotta make sure we're doing things safe and, and not being a nuisance to our neighbor and, and so forth with like that. And I always said, rain on the third of July was proof that God loved firefighters, so, <laughs> so, yeah. especially those dry years. We like to see rain on the third of July. Just yeah. Yeah. Do that. yeah. Yeah. It comes with its problems with it, but you know, all in all, I would say on and large, is they're pretty minimal. They're easy to take care of. Yeah. Uh, the community and the citizens do a pretty good job taking care of themselves and, and being responsible. Unfortunately, accidents do happen. That's why they call them accidents. Yep. You know? And uh, it was, I was this weekend. I was scrolling on Facebook, come across a little joke, and he said, "You know, July 3rd is." somebody's last day they're going to have all 10 figures so it's, <laughs> yeah. it's funny but it yeah. does make, it's tragic it does make yeah. you think about yes. you know hey yeah. I, you know and uh 15 to 19 year olds are the most most harmed people yeah uh, and most injuries come uh, by large firecrackers which we completely understand but sparklers was right there mm. as well and it's not because they go boom because they just get so hot and they yeah. cause burn injuries so, yeah you know, so burn injuries is a big big yeah. thing with well, you know, I don't know if there's a sort of statute of limitations, but but I'm a I've always I'm the kind of guy, guys. I've always been honest. I'm honest on this podcast. I, you know, there was a time from 15 to 19, tragically 15 to maybe 29. I was a complete idiot um, on the Fourth of July, right? I mean, I uh, some some years we started on the first of July. I've been sober now for since 2001 but i think there were sometimes we started on the first of july and we maybe didn't sober up until the 10th of july which is tragic i'm not proud of that but but now that i'm 54 years old i'm a dad um i'm a i'm a business owner of watertown we've got over 40 employees and um and now um and i i don't want to seem like i'm 75 years old but now my prayers are is that my staff will all be state that my staff will all be safe and their families will be safe. And, and then, you know, my prayers just keep going out, right? That, that people in Cranzburg will be safe and the people at the parade here and the fireworks here will be safe. And, 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 um, and then, you know, I, I do, I pray for your guys' groups as well, because it's not easy. I, your guys' deal isn't easy. If you, if somebody has a bad accident on the 4th of July, it can, it can wreck the holiday, not just this year, but you know, can wreck the holiday for a few years, right? And um, and we all know this. The fact of the matter is, is 
there's a lot of alcohol and and or drugs consumed. Uh, I mean, I'm just being real. And and when people are that way, they're not in their right mind. And, and sometimes the Watertown Police Department can be doing everything they can to give this person a break, but they're not in their right mind to understand that, right? And, and that's not easy for patrol officers either. And so, you know, we just pray. I, I pray that, uh, you know, we have the freedom in America to do a lot of things, right? But that doesn't mean that uh, my belief is is we don't that doesn't give us the freedom to trample on somebody else's freedoms and um, in our society right now that seems to be looked at or viewed as though it's okay and so I just pray that uh, pray that it goes well this year and you guys uh, are able to uh, enjoy some of the fun festivities um, without a lot of uh, accidents and uh, and police calls yeah let's all hope that before we wrap up here, um, I just want to give you both the opportunity. What is one thing that you want people to better understand about your profession that they don't know, or maybe it's an assumption or a falsehood that's out there that you want to debunk? I think for the police department anyway, I, I can't speak for police departments across the country, but I can speak for our department. Um, in fact, we just had a brand new officer starting this morning. So for the first hour of my day, I was giving him a tour around the building and then um, introducing him to the rest of our staff. And uh, I'm quite certain that officer had no idea how many things that our department is involved in. That, again, this is just our department. I'm probably not the same, but like later tonight, we're gonna put on a, a running race out at uh, Jackson Park. It's called the Freedom Run. It's probably about the 12th year or so we've done this race out there. So, I mean, our police department has a timing system where we can electronically chip time uh, races like that. Uh, next weekend we'll be out at the Lake and Pesca doing a triathlon timing that. So it's just, you would never guess that a police department is doing that, but what we do is we, we put on these races for healthy alternatives for people to participate in in town. And um, it's that kind of thing. We are just a vast number of little programs that we do that uh, on a one-off thing, it's not that big of a deal, but collectively like, um, Coloring with a cop, we've been doing that at preschools and stuff for years, and and um, it's just a great way to build relationships with our community members that way. We just wrapped up our teen police academy where we had about 12 kids that gave up a week of their summer vacation to come hang out with a bunch of cops for the week and learn a little bit about police work. And um, nobody would have, nobody knows that we do that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, or not as many people know that we're involved in more. It's not about arresting bad guys and putting them in jail. That's like such a small part of what we do. The rest of it is just building that community trust and being good stewards of city government and police department or police work in general. Yeah, yeah I would I would agree with that 100%. People people don't realize all that all that the police department does and and I can't speak for you guys, but I got to believe this. I say it all the time when we have a disgruntled customer in the store. I tell them, I look them in the eye and I say, you know what? My employee didn't wake up today, look in the mirror, brush their teeth and go, I want to make Bob's day horrible. <laughs> they didn't do that, right? I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, I have to believe that maybe not all, but the vast majority of your police officers, the last thing they want to do is have to arrest someone, right? It's like, you know, my dad used to, <laughs> I was a... I was a horrible teenage kid, and my dad used to tell me, you won't have any trouble with the police if you don't do stupid things. I mean, my dad, my dad's just a simplistic guy like that, right? He, they have no reason to bother you if you're not being an idiot, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, and I think that goes a long ways, right, to build that trust and to, to, so that when they see someone with a uniform on, they, they're not timid or scared of them, right? They understand that that you're just part of the community just like they are. So, how about you, Scott? Well, you know, I just want to build on what Ryan said a little bit and that community trust or whatever. I said, the citizens of Watertown don't necessarily understand how lucky they are that they have a police force and a fire force that work together. Yeah. And that's not always true in every community. Uh, the police departments, fire departments don't necessarily get along. And we're a better team as a city and better served as a city because we, we get along. Now, Ryan picks on me a and and I go home, you know, beating down a little bit. But I don't let that detour from that. I mean, I, I just know he's jealous. But uh, but we have that that great rapport between the two departments. That you know, we, I talk about that family. You know, brothers pick on brothers. Yes. 
but the Smiths don't pick on the on the brothers. Yeah, you know? and we've we've built that bond. We we heckle between each other. Uh, been pretty pretty quiet between us today. Um, we'll probably crack a couple of jokes at each other on the way out. It's, <laughs> it's early. And talk about how uh, how each of us sounded really smart and how small, dumb we really sounded too. <laughs> We're in, a, we're in a great community that, that they just don't understand how great it is that the police and the fire department work together. And yeah. Ultimately, we go back to it. And I, know, I know it's there to believe, too, is that we're there to serve the community. We're there for that customer service. We're there for you, and and we want to help you make it through your, your what's going on for you right now as a yeah. part of your day. And uh, for us, unfortunately, their worst part of their day is some of the exciting stuff that We've learned to do and don't necessarily want to have to do, but we're we're going to make sure we're there to take care of you the best we can, working together as that team and, and getting things taken care of. So. Yeah, I would agree 100% with that too, Scott. We are we are very very blessed to live in Watertown. You know, one like parting shot, Shane, just because I got to do something that's a little bit controversial. Um, if you want these guys, people are listening to podcasts, if you want these guys and their departments to continue to do what they're doing at the level that they're doing, the next time you're on Amazon, don't buy. Don't buy. When you're next time you're online, don't buy. Go find some place in Watertown and do your business. It doesn't have to be at Travis Outfitter, but find some place in Watertown and do your business. I, uh, where was I? I was just someplace this weekend. Oh, I was at this men's retreat. It's a men's Christian retreat. I was at this deal, and, and this guy said, he was saying something about Watertown. You couldn't get what you want or something Watertown. I said, do you know something? I haven't stepped foot in Walmart in 20 years, and I'm still alive. And the guy looks at me. I said, I can get everything that I need in Watertown. I can. I can get everything that I need in Watertown. Now, can I get everything that I want? In Watertown? No, probably not. But I can get everything that I need in Watertown. And so if people would get everything that they needed in Watertown and only buy the things they wanted outside of Watertown, think of the additional tax revenue that we'd be able to take in in Watertown that would uh, help fund what you guys have got going on. So, so that's my controversial thing that we're going to close this podcast with. Do your business in Watertown and support these guys and their families. And as we wrap up episode three, I just want to thank um, both the Watertown Police Department and the Watertown Fire Rescue Department for allowing us to have them for a few uh, few minutes of their time this week. And um, have a happy Independence Week. And if you see these guys out on the street doing their community work, please give them a thank you. Um, it means a lot to them. Um, and if you see veterans as well, uh, they, they appreciate your, your uh, appreciation as well, um, especially coming up on 4th of July. Um, these are the people that keep us safe at home, um, and we want to keep them here. So we appreciate you guys listening to Episode 3 of the Travs Outfitter Podcast, and we can't wait for this to drop and, and for you guys to all listen, and we'll get on with Episode 4 soon. Thank you. Have a great 4th of July.